Good afternoon, everyone. Hudson Bay in Northeast Canada, very close to Baffin Island in Greenland, where the sea ice has not been melting in July and August. This is what the sea ice concentrations look like in July, in August as well. And you might think, how thick is that ice? It's almost a meter thick in August. So much ice, in fact, that in the middle of July, they had to have emergency oil deliveries using icebreakers to get to the coastal villages and towns there. And this is what sea ice not melting in the bay looks like. Obama ordering more icebreakers. Shortest melt season on record in the Arctic. And let's go back in time. Ice decreased naturally then as well. It is a cycle. Hudson Bay, Northeast Canada, off the Labrador Sea. What could explain the ice this year could possibly be the water currents coming from Baffin Island that the sea surface temperature anomaly does show cooler than normal temperatures, which could account for this year having the shortest melt season on record in the Arctic. July had incredible density of ice still in Hudson Bay surrounding Baffin Island and so much ice, in fact, the Canadian Coast Guard quotes, the ice has not been melting. They had to divert icebreakers to deliver oil into coastal communities that were still ice locked in. Some images for you here. The resupply ships need to navigate heavy ice. This is what's considered heavy ice in the middle of July. Obama, in the meantime, ordering new icebreakers, you might ask yourself why. I think they know something they're not telling us. A look back at the exact same time of July 2014, you can see some ice in Hudson Bay. A larger chunk of time from 2004, upper left corner. You can see there was very little ice in 2010, but it started to rebound in 2011. 2012. Oh, and I'm going to keep you going. 2014. Massive increases by 2015. Ice in August. It didn't melt off until past the middle of August, nearly into September. And the Arctic Sea ice extent this year has the seventh most ice, contrary to all the warmest year ever no more ice in the arctic predictions as well as claims from this year canadian ice service shows the fourth most ice in the week of august 6th in hudson bay the green line is a 30-year moving average again these last weeks coming into the summer show above average ice coverage Environment Canada, putting out where the temperatures are cooling most across the country, as you can see in that same area over Baffin Island, including Hudson Bay. Areas around there are also falling in temperature. Average temperature dropped 4 degrees Celsius in the last three years. This is in Nunavut. I really enjoy taking a look at these older maps and lithographs that we still have from the 1920s and earlier. This one stayed for posterity's sake, showing 1921 ice coverage is pretty complete around the Arctic Circle. Yet when we jump to 1938, wow, that looks very similar to what today's ice conditions are. That's a natural cycle. There was nothing to do with CO2 emissions at that time. It just occurred naturally. It rebounded through the 1980s into the mid-90s. Stephen Goddard put together a comparison of the Laurentide ice sheet compared to what our modern polar vortex looks like. I should say vortices from the last couple of years. The Atlantic multidecadal oscillation, AMO for short, shows that there are repeating patterns in warming and cooling of the Atlantic Ocean. This is a different view for you here from 1880. And if you do want to show trend lines, that is definitely a cycle. A 
affecting what happens with the ice coverage in our northern hemisphere. So I'd like you to take a look at the trend lines and then compare it with the lithographs and notice exactly the years and the ice coverage compared to the historical record of the AMO. Surprising the match on that. And if you follow it through to today, you'll find the exact same match of AMO temperature compared to Arctic ice coverage. Speaking of which, the yellow circled areas are of interest to me, as well as the south tip of South America and New Zealand. Top left, you'll notice the cool blob is exactly where we're talking about with the cooler water temperatures, yet NOAA doesn't find that that information should be included in these monthly warmest year ever scary maps. And if we take a look at the daily sea surface temperatures from the 1971 to 2000 baseline average, where you see the purple circles, that's where it's really cooling. Compare it to the map previously and you'll see that there is a disparity in the temperature correlation by miles. Jumping back wherever it's inconvenient, such as the tip of South America where it is showing a cooling trend. Oh, there's missing information. How could the entire bottom of our world not even have one temperature reading? Nor the top. Global warming based on melting glaciers and reseeding ice and hotter temperatures, yet there's no temperature readings on either of our polls for the general public to see. And these news flashes that go out to all the major newspapers across the world to put in their pages, you just don't see the sea surface temperature map of this sort for the general release for the general public you have to dig into a scientific back page site search site map click through to finally find this daily sea surface temperature these are the ice concentrations on october 2nd notice hudson bay as well as an enormous amount of ice at 100 percent coverage at the arctic circle contrary to what we were told there would be never ice again and ships would go through there ice thickness now, when you look at this at glance, all you do is really see the aqua colors at the Arctic Circle. The purple really fades in. It's difficult to see. So I turned down the contrast as much as I could to really make that purple boost out. So we see at least a half a meter to a meter thick of ice in the Hudson Bay on August 2nd. A meter is three feet thick. Is that normal? Three feet thick ice in August. In the cyclical pattern of solar minimums, we can go back even further, back to the Greek minimum, the Homeric minimum, and back 4,900 years or so to the Noachan minimum. You know, we have all these minimums here in the last thousand years that have been correlated with modern science from the Oort minimum, the Wolf, Spore, Maunder minimum, Dalton minimum, and our new minimum that we're entering right now. And, you know, I'll leave you with the last thought looking at this picture. We really need to stop global warming because all that ice that's still in the Hudson Bay in August is going to melt if we don't stop global warming. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Please remember to subscribe to my channel, Adapt2030. Share with others, and I will keep these stories coming to you.